Where did those phishing emails come from anyway? Hey Stan, I hear you have a story about tracking email infrastructure to detect criminal activity. Oh yeah, uh, this one is really interesting uh, research uh, by the threat intelligence team over at Microsoft. Um, and um, you know, I'm sure everyone of our viewers and everyone on the internet pretty much has received many phishing emails out there. But have you ever wondered like where do they come from and uh, What's the, you know, the email bots that keep sending them and how do they keep getting through? So the guys at Microsoft, the, the threat intelligence team, they kind of sat down and um, they started studying uh, different aspects of different phishing campaigns uh, that they have visibility into uh, and trying to understand their properties. And um, I found it fascinating to read their write-up. It's um, very detailed. It has a lot of information on there. And it reveals a couple of different things that, just curious, you know, like if you have like that analytical or investigative mindset and you want to know, like, how do bad guys set up infrastructure? It's a really interesting read. A couple of things that came away for me uh, um, that I took away, there was a, um, basically a takedown of a bot, ne of a, like a, a distribution network like called Neckers. And like just like a few days later, uh, this new campaign, which they're calling uh, Strange You, started up and built up this whole entire new infrastructure for sending these emails. Uh, and a lot of times we talk about like emails being sent by botnets or emails being sent by compromised infrastructure uh, in, for these criminal activities. Uh, but the guys at Microsoft, they kind of pointed out there's a, a couple of different strategies that the adversaries use uh, for their hosting. You know, they set up dynamic hosting for, uh, you know, from legitimate providers that they pay for as well as um, they might be using compromised infrastructure as well as possibly using botnets. So they're not like ever limiting themselves to any one particular uh, way of doing it. Uh, but the way they register things can give a little bit of a clue as to uh, that, you know, this is all one thing. It's not like a separate thing, uh, one another. So what are some ideas like that? So first is um, uh, the domains that they were registering for one of the campaigns, they kind of had similar keywords in them, um, maybe pointed to similar IP addresses. They were also used to distribute similar types of uh, malware week over week, week. One interesting thing they mentioned is that there's, I guess, uh, the .us TLD, which is like websites ending in .us. Um, I didn't know this, um, I guess I, I hadn't been paying attention, but you cannot use privacy protected uh, uh, registrations for those domains. So you have to put like your name in there and your organization if you're gonna get a domain that ends with .us. Uh, but you know, they were just using tactics of putting fake information in there uh, instead of legitimate ones. But it led a couple of uh, analysts who kind of looked at this article with me to question like, why would the adversary do it? Uh, and, you know, why would they do that? Why would they register a TLD that you need your real information on? And I was wondering that maybe there was a sale or something, you know, because domains, they cost, uh, and I don't know if this is the case or not, but domains, they cost money to register. You, you can't just like pick one. And there's different prices for different TLDs. In fact, while I was looking into it myself, um, there's this whole website out there that just tracks prices. It's, it's like the stock market, but for TLD registrations across different providers. And different days, uh, you could have like different costs for registering. There might be a sale at one provider or another. And I was wondering if maybe it's, the, it's this cross-section of a domain of TLD appears legitimate, there might be a sale on it or something just within the budget of the adversary. Uh, that you know they might forego these extra privacy protections and just put fake information because that's free too. Uh, you know, using fake information is uh, so found things like that interesting. You know, found, I found it very interesting that uh, it's this combination of infrastructure. It's not just compromised assets or hacked websites that are using uh, to send um, spam. It's these hosting providers that are legitimately 
being bought first round, which also indicates, you know, all this phishing we get, all this malware we get, this Emotet, the Drydex, um, TrickBot, maybe Valak, all these different botnets. Cyber criminals, they're committed to continuing to run them, and they make money that allows them to use all kinds of infrastructure to pay for it, to register the domain names. And that means, unfortunately, they're not going away. And for us as defenders, I think what it means is we have to be uh, more vigilant about how we design protections and uh, uh, what we do to protect um, you know, our enterprises uh, from adversaries who are, they're geared to, to come after you know, our users or you know, if you're just at home by yourself, they're, they're, they're counting that they're going to be able to compromise you. Microsoft also had a couple of recommendations in their article, which I thought um, were interesting. The first one was educate end users. And I think uh, this will resonate with a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> I think that's like a recommendation was given over and over again. But I found it interesting that, you know, of all the different things, you know, educating the end user is still like, this was like at the, the very top of their bullet list of things that, you know, should be done. Um, because with phishing, it is a lot of times the user who's kind of like the firewall and yeah. um, adversaries are doing everything they can to like, like basically hack you personally, but like your mind, want, your response. They, they want them to compromise themselves, right? You don't, you know, you let the user do the hard work. You know, you don't have to hack it. You just let me, you know, if you click this link and you've done it to yourself. <laughs> exactly. And there's been so many, like, Social engineers are like really good at being friendly. In fact, if you've ever seen somebody who is like a little bit like of a fraudster or a scammer, they're like, they could be lying to you and you know that they are. It, sometimes good salesmen are like this too. Like you go to buy a car or something and you know that, you know, that you're there to buy a car, they know you're there to buy a car and there's this whole thing, you know, you kind of might overpay or whatever. But at the end, a really good salesman or a really good fraudster who's like tapped into your psychology, they'll make you feel really good about whatever it is you just bought. You like pay $5,000 more or you got a bigger car than you wanted, but you'll feel good about it. And there's something about um, some of these social engineers, they're just really able to tap into the human psyche at that level where you feel comfortable with them. It could be by email. It could be by phone call. They might call you and say something to you, and um, it just never ceases to amaze me. So, uh, you know, I I, uh, I agree with this. You know, educate end users, and everyone has to be vigilant um, uh, personally. Uh, of course, there's a bunch of other technical controls uh, that are like super technical, and I encourage everyone to read this great research from Microsoft. Um, take advantage of the information that they're putting out there in terms of protections uh, that you should be implementing or different strategies to implement themselves. So, so I, I got a question for you. I know you mentioned it struck, to, it struck me, Stan, you know, if they're shopping for DNS or, you know, dynamic DNS or whatever they're looking for, is, is a, I don't know, it, it, would it be behoove some company out there to create a sale just to try and trap these people to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to put my domains like five dollars cheaper than everybody else just to see who registers. I think so, uh, and I believe uh, there's probably one or two security researchers out there that this mo this is probably their tactic uh, that they're using. It's interesting as well. Like if you want to register a domain on the cheap, you're pretty much sharing your fate with uh, bad guys. So uh, yeah. you know, there's dom domain TLDs that are like really interesting, uh, but they cost like 59 cents a domain name to register because their reputation is like really, really low and everyone knows like block the whatever, this domain that, uh, you know, whatever the bad domain name is. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think there is something to be said about, um, you know, doing security research through following domain registrations. I think a lot of security researchers out there, they also look for expirations of um, uh, security domain uh, of domains that are known to be associated with malware to help take them down, to help notify victims, to help study these different activities. Because um, believe it or not, the adversaries are actually like moving very fast, like much faster than domains expire. And sometimes they actually leave victims behind 
that are like always beaconing to somewhere that doesn't exist. It's like a, an infection to nowhere, so to speak. And it's really when security researchers um, grab the domains that they're able to make a positive impact um, and let, um, let people know of their infection so they could take care of it. Um, yeah, I would say it was really enjoyable for me to read the article since it kind of focused on proactive security. I know you hear all the time about defensive measures and how to secure your system, but it, it's nice to see how some security researchers are taking a proactive approach to trying to find these domains. Because I know the article kind of specified how these domains were reused in multiple malware campaigns. Yeah, that's interesting. You're right. And at some point, uh, they did mention they were even like able to predict how certain domains were going to be used just by the keywords that are contained in them. It's really awesome, uh, uh, awesome research by Microsoft team there.